So um, with that, um, I will um, allow Lynn O'Neill, Lynn Bailey O'Neill, I hate it when people change their name. I have a hard enough time remembering when the first time. So Lynn came to us from the physician's practice, one of our larger practices, and um, she will tell you how she was volunteered and um, her, her process. Thanks, Kimber. Like she said, my name is Lynn Bailey O'Neill. Um, I came to find out about this lean project by receiving an email that says, congratulations, you've been chosen. And I was like, oh, dang, what did I do? What did I do? <laughs> I was clueless. I showed up at this event. I walked in, didn't know what anybody or what was going on. And this became an eye-opening experience for me as well as everybody else. I met a lot of friends, um, met people, learned processes, figured out what Medicare and CMS and home health really needed in order to get paid. Um, we worked hard and found out that there was a lot of processes that many people were doing and duplicating them. We thought in our clinic that when you had a face-to-face -face visit that needed to be done, they faxed you a form, we filled it out, the doctor signed it, we faxed it back. Not realizing that the next day and the next day and the next day I might get one, two, three more of the same form. I've done that one, shred it, shred it. Kimber's face about fell off when she realized we were shredding all of these documents because we knew we had already sent one back. This, we realized, was going to be a lot of work in progress. Then I learned why I was here. Mm. My doc had the highest denial rate for healthy at home. <laughs> uh, not good. This isn't what I want to be associated with either. We have to fix this problem. Thus, the education and the learning began. Concord Internal Medicine. I am the practice manager of this um, practice. It is very large. We have a 65% Medicare ratio just in our practice alone. Um, to understand who we are, you have to realize I have one physician, Dr. Kelling. He still practices traditional medicine. How many physicians out there now still practice traditional medicine? He gets up in the morning, goes to the hospital at 5 a.m., he rounds, comes to the clinic, sees 30 plus patients, goes back to the hospital, rounds again, sees his admissions, and ends his day about 10 p.m. We had to figure out a way for him to do this and meet the requirements and the needs of um, the patients in home health. We have three additional PMDs and six PAs. We also utilize two hospitalists, Dr. Barone and Dr. Schrager, when Dr. Kelling is off. This provides continuity of care for our patients who are used to seeing a provider in the hospital from the practice. We also have two care managers that, or three care managers that we use that work on the hospital side that belong to the clinic that help with our admissions and our discharges. So we knew as a team, an integrated system with all of the components between the clinic and the hospital and all of our resources that we would have to utilize everyone to make this a success. Where do we start? Well, guess what? Education is always the first and foremost in anything that you do. We had to educate the providers and the ACPs or the PAs surrounding the need for the documentation of home health, what they needed to put in the face-to-face -face visits. Why? To fulfill Medicare documentation requirements plus reimbursement for the home health agencies, making sure that we have all of the information in the right place at the right time when it's needed. What, what was needed? They needed to understand what was important. I didn't know what was important as far as what Medicare needed and what home health needed to get paid. They needed to understand the four driving questions. What is the structural impairment, the functional impairment, activity limitations, and what services are provided address these three questions. They didn't understand that. Where did the information need to go? We had to teach them that where it had, it had to go in the patient's chart on the outpatient side. It could go in an office visit, a discharge summary, or their progress notes. The providers, of course, says, but we already do this, we do this. Yes, we do. We do it to the best of our understanding and our ability, but unfortunately, I have learned it's not good enough. We need to provide more supporting documentation in the notes and wherever we're putting it to support Medicare and home health agencies for payments. 
So in the outpatient world, we decided on uh, several initiatives that we would do. We had to figure out how to get this documentation where it needed to go. So our first initiative, we're on an EMR Cerner. We developed a template in Cerner that the providers could use the four driving questions, use it as a template, dictate it in, drop it in the note, and we're done. Yay, all was good, it didn't work as well. The providers didn't understand the four questions. Like they said before, I'm not trained that way, I don't speak that way, I don't think that way. How could we help them understand? What else could we do to help them understand what those four driving questions really needed? So began initiative two. We took the voluntary um, Medicare documentation form, revamped the template, gave them more information and cues as to what the information needed and where it needed, where it needed to be placed. Same process. Document using the template, using the Medicare voluntary form, input it into the EMR, bam, it's in your um, office visit. So then I was sitting at my desk one day and Dr. Kelly came running in after morning rounds. He said, I got it, I got it. I was like, mm, okay, what did you get? He said, I understand what Medicare needs. I understand what they want in there. I was like, okay, tell me. He says, well, they need the who, what, when, where, why, and how. And now I've put my head around it, I understand it. So, thus education to additional providers, going back to them and reteaching them, now they also understand. He put it in the terms that they were taught and how they learned and how they think. So we began with the third initiative. We didn't know when they went home from the hospital, came for their hospital follow-up visit, they even went home with home help. We had no clue. There was a disconnect in communication from the hospital side to the clinic side. How do we fix it? Our next initiative began. We worked with the RN care managers that when the patient, they would make the provider aware, hey, Ms. Jones is going home with home health with nursing service because of XYZ. Okay. The patient is then discharged home. When they go home, they scheduled the office visit for a hospital follow-up visit. On the reason for visit line, they put F2F. This alerted the people in the clinic, as well as the providers, hey, when Susie comes in, she needs face-to-face -face information documented in her office visit. They looked back at, their, her, at her hospitalization and her discharge summary. It told us why she was going home, what her medical needs were, and what she went home with. Thus, we were capturing it on the inpatient side, and this was our way of alerting everyone that that's what she needed. Patient discharged with home health, follow-up visit scheduled as hospital follow-up face-to-face, patient seen in the office, and the documentation is completed by that provider. Well, now we had played all this in place, but we had no clue how we were really doing. We were struggling for measures, what to look at, how to look at it, and what to do with it. So I worked with Kimber, and she sent Medicare some of our information. They sent samples of some of these things that we had documented from patients that they, that they had cared for after we had began these processes. We wanted to know were we on the right track, what were we doing? Medicare reviewed showed improvement. We were actually providing the information that was needed, but they also provided us with feedback and says, you know, this area, this area, and this area could have a little stronger documentation. You could change this or make it, you need to be more specific for this specific reason or that. That gave us a lot of information there. It told us we were on the right track, but now we have more things we could improve on. As we continued, we're like, okay, we're, we're kind of getting it on the outpatient side, but here I have a physician round seven days a week, or he has somebody that's rounding for him, this part of our team. What else can we do? How else can we capture this information other than just the outpatient world. Thus, we began a new initiative on the inpatient side. During morning rounds, the provider is made aware, Ms. Jones is going home with home care. Okay, he then documents the information in his discharge summary. So we're capturing it in that space. He provides it in the discharge summary as face-to-face. -face. So then the patient goes home, 
they're discharged, they still have a face-to-face -face visit set in their hospital follow-up. We use it at the hospital as our primary way to capture our information for face-to-face -face documentation, but we're using the, in, the outpatient side as well on the clinic. Did we get it? Is it sufficient? If not, this is our secondary method in getting the information in. This is all working great. We're doing well, but there are a lot of initiatives in progress. I am part of Carolina's healthcare system, and like Kimber said, it's fast, it's huge, it's many. I'm just one location, which is Carolina's healthcare system northeast. I'm in the northern region in Concord, North Carolina. There are many, many other areas that we have to reach. So at Northeast, we are looking to try to implement some of our processes throughout our part of the organization. One is there's ongoing discussion with the hospital side to develop the process that we're using to get the patient's discharge summary into their home health record, uh, their home health information into the hospital with the follow-up face-to-face prior to being discharged or scheduling that visit for those people who use hospitalists as we schedule ours hospital follow-up face-to-face. That way the outpatient only physician knows that they need to document or look and see why they went home with home health. When the hospital is discharged, them, they may not realize that's that they had gone home with home health. It makes the clinic, the clinics that use the hospitalists aware that they need this and it will provide their clinical staff information to support the, to get the physician to do this. There's also ongoing with the hospitalist group regarding documentation working for a process to make all the hospitalists aware as we do Dr. Kelling, that they're going home, educating them on the processes of what to put in the documentation on the hospital side and that where we're taking care of it on that side. 